Okay, so last time we were trying to prove a necessary condition or no, no sufficient condition for a graph having a Hamiltonian cycle, and we said what is called Dirac's theorem. So this is a theorem that we wanted to prove, and Dirac proved this in 1962 or 72. I don't know, 52. I'm sorry. That if G is a simple graph with n greater than or equal to 3, okay, and uh, vertices, and if delta of G is at least n over 2, at least n over 2, greater than or equal to n over 2, then G is Hamiltonian. So this is where we will start and uh, hopefully at some point of time there will be a switch today and Shirley will teach you uh, matching theory. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so first of all, why in this theorem we can't have n equal to 2? Why not this? That's right. Right? Because if n equal to 2, in the worst case, because it's a simple graph, all you can have is this. So in this statement, at least n greater than or equal to 3 is important. Okay. And let's just try to see what happens for three vertex graph if minimum degree is at least n by 2. So 3 by 2 is what? 1.5, which means the what is the minimum degree of this graph? Right? Because it says that minimum degree is at least 1.5. But degree is an integer quantity. So what is the nearest integer that we will have is like 2. Okay? So now look at a 3 vertex. Okay? And this has degree at least 2, which means that he better be neighbor to other two people. This guy better to be neighbor to other two people than, than go down. Okay? So this does gives us nice. Okay. So now we will try to prove this in general. Okay? And the way I am going to try to prove it is that, okay, Assume that this statement is not true. <coughs> right? Assume that this statement is not true. What is the meaning that this statement is not true? There is a, some infinite family of counterexample, or at least there exists one counterexample for all that to matter. Right? So if I can show as a proof strategy that there is no counterexample, then we are done. Right? So I'm going to try to show to you that look, there are no counterexample to this problem, okay, or to the statement. So assume that the statement is not true. So let's, I'm going to say, it means there are counterexamples. There are counterexamples, okay, among all counterexamples. Let us choose the one with minimum number of vertices, say n. Right? So there could be many counterexamples. Among all those counterexamples, I am picking the counterexample where the number of vertices is minimum. But there could be many counterexamples of same size, right? So now this is my first derivative. Now among all counterexamples of size, uh, uh, among all counterexamples, among all counterexamples with n vertices, okay, with n vertices, choose one with maximum number of edges. Okay. So now, so what does it mean? First of all, the first statement means there is no counterexample on n minus 1 vertices. That's the first thing, right? So the smallest counterexample that we, we will need to think of, we will need to build, must contain 
n vertices. Okay. Now there could be many counterexamples on n vertices. Among all those, I choose the one which contains maximum number of edges. Even this is not unique. There could be several graphs with n vertices and m edges who form a counterexample for us. Choose an arbitrary. So suppose minimum number of edges, say m. Okay. So now I'm saying, choose a counterexample. Choose an arbitrary counterexample. Choose an arbitrary counterexample, say G, with n vertices and m edges. Okay. I have now, if I show to you that there is no such counterexample with n vertices and m edges, then we are done, right? Because among all the counterexamples, I selected the one with minimum number of vertices. Among all those, I selected the one which maximizes number of edges and among all those I just chose an, I just chose an arbitrary graph G which form. What is the meaning of counter example? So first of all this G has n vertices and m edges and what all things does it satisfy? First of all it satisfies that n is at least 3 okay? that is, and minimum degree of this graph is at least n by 2. This is what we know and what is our claim that look it satisfies the number of vertices is at least 3, minimum degree is at least n by 2, but it does not have a Hamiltonian cycle, right? And does not have a Hamiltonian cycle. Okay? Okay. Now, because the way we chose, now look at some interesting property of this graph. Okay? So now we are going to, to derive some nice structural property of this family, this graph G, not even family, this graph G. Let u and v be two vertices, two vertices in v of g, okay? such that uv is not edge. Okay? Sometimes I write uv, sometimes write u comma v. For now, let's just assume that they mean the same thing. Then if it's undirected graph, it does not mean whether I write uv or vu. But if for directed graph, it means what u comma v will mean or what v comma u will mean because that means direction. Okay? So we will make such this thing. Okay? So uv is not an edge. Okay? So here's a graph g. And here is an u and here is an v. And if I add an edge uv, so I add edge g plus uv, what can you say about g plus uv? It must be Hamiltonian. Why? Because if it is not Hamiltonian, then, then the assumption that we started with that among all the vertices of n, choose a counterexample with maximum number of edges will fail. Right? So this is true about for any pair of vertices u comma b, okay, such that u v not in edge, we have what? We have that g plus u v is Hamiltonian. Okay, any doubt? Is there any question here? So now we have built up the structure. Okay? So this is how you form, this is how you go about proving something, a statement is true with respect to count. I mean, I could also make other things, but I just wanted to tell you this as a method of proof strategy. Okay? And I want to come back to this proof strategy several times during this course. Okay? So, and now look, because the way we have selected things, what, what is this? This is like a critical graph in the sense. You add any non-edge and the graph becomes Hamiltonian. But you did not ask me a question, but yeah, you added the edge uv, but like why does it satisfy this condition? Because by adding an edge, minimum degree will not change. That is why this, like if I added an edge, it cannot form a counterexample because this is also a graph which satisfies the property that number of vertices is at least three and minimum degree is at least n by two. Otherwise, we cannot make the statement. 
you get my point okay we have that as adding an edge does not decrease a minimum degree so in fact this is also a graph which has this property right which has this property this right this g plus uv graph right but if it was not hamiltonian then this would have been part of our counter example then we should have talked about g plus uv graph not g itself all good okay so now it's now it's true okay okay so now it is a simple thing okay so there exists an hamiltonian cycle containing uv which implies what g has a hamiltonian path right so this implies what g has a hamiltonian path hamiltonian path starting at u and ending at v because at the moment i add u g u v have a cycle hamiltonian cycle where u and v are together because and that why because look at this hamiltonian cycle that must contain this red edge because if it did not contain this red edge then g would have been hamiltonian itself is that okay ananya right because g was not hamiltonian okay okay so what happened g not ham g plus uv ham implies ham cycle must contain uv edge okay delete uv gives you ham path of this nature right so this is important so again again i use here that g is very structured right so our counter the way we chose minimum and maximum this counter example is very structured look if there are counter example there are just structured counter example if there exists and if we can show there is no structure counter example that all simply there is no counter example at all okay so now we are done so now let's talk about this hamiltonian path okay <coughs> okay so let's look at p look at u and look at v okay and let's call it v1 v2 let's call this u equal to v1 okay just so that it is easier v 2 v 3 dot 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 v equal to v okay. imagine that if i found a two consecutive vertices imagine that i find two vertices here vi and vi plus 1 which has the following property okay let's see that u sees this and v sees this then what can you do huh i can then i think we should be able to so then i can go from ha huh, right what i can go from here to here i can go from here to here okay let's call this piece p1 follow the piece p2 then i can come here p3 and then come back p4 it's a hamiltonian cycle so if i can find a consecutive vertices vi and vi plus 1 such that u has a neighbor to vi plus 1 v has a neighbor to vi we are done right so what if there exist a pair of 
consecutive vertices on P, let us call this path P, yeah, consecutive vertices V i V i plus on P such that u is a neighbor to v i plus 1 and v is a neighbor to v i implies ham cycle. Right? Lonzo. So now let us what should we do? Yeah. Pigeon hole principle. What are what are my pigeons? What are my pigeons? So let us assign some set with u. Okay. Let us assign a set L with u or index rather than index. L is an index i if u v i plus 1 is an edge. If u v i plus 1 is an edge. Okay. So now u i if u has a neighbor to v i plus 1 then I call v. Right? This is what my L is. My right is I if V V I is in H. Like, look, is that fine? Okay. If L intersection R was non empty, we are done. You, you understand my point? So, what L also says, look, for me, I is important because I have a neighbor to be plus one. That's all that it says. R says all my neighbors are my important property of V, right? Okay. I think this should be fine, but let's see. Right? Is it clear? Okay. okay. Observe if L intersection R is not equal to empty set, we are done. Okay. Okay. But what is cardinality of L? What is the cardinality of L? What is the cardinality of R? Think about it. Let me not say, I think. Hmm? What will you say? L intersection R, sorry, L union R plus L intersection R is equal to, in our case, what it is? Hmm? I am counting this. This is basically exactly equal to L plus R. Right? Because what is L union R? You are counting the intersection ones. And when you take L intersection R, you are counting again because if you take L plus R, you are counting the same. Look at this L, no? L, no. This is L and this is R. So what is L union R? You are counting this twice, right? So I counted here once and I counted here once. So this is exactly equal to L. Okay. And what is at least L plus R? What is at least R? L? is at least equal to degree of u, right? right? Because all the neighbors are here. What is r? And this is equal to n. Agreed? Okay. But now look at, so if L intersection r was non-empty, would have been done, right? But L intersection r, okay. But look at this otherwise. Can L contain V or Vn, whatever that means, same? Tell me. Can L contain V equal to Vn? Why? Because that is the edge we assume that it does not exist. Because we started the G does not have the edge UV, right? So definitely V equal to Vn is not there. Okay. Okay. Can R contain? V equal to Vn? No, 
It's the same vertex. We are only talking about that being an edge, and it's a simple graph. And we know that L intersection R is empty. So what is L intersection R, L union R then? Right? So we know that this plus this is at least L. We know this is upper bounded by N minus 1. So what does this imply? So it's just basically pigeonhole principle after that. Once we have set up everything and right, all we cared about that how do we find this. So we took this Hamiltonian path and the point is very simple. I mean this, look, if you have seen pigeonhole principle with like there are two consecutive numbers or something, it is very exactly like this. You just have to set up your pigeons or the boxes appropriately and then it, everything will fall. Okay? So that's all that it is. But look at the proof of this. Did we ever use the fact that delta g is at least n by 2? All we cared about is the following. Okay. Okay. So there is a slightly stronger version of theorem which says that you can replace this statement with the fact that for any non-adjacent vertices u comma v, du plus dv is at least n over uh, is at least n, and then you are done. Okay. So. what is called Ore's condition or Ore observed in 1960 is that simple graph and if for all non adjacent vertices u and v du plus dv is at least n then G is Hamiltonian. Okay? Is that fine? Because the proof we never use. You do the same thing. You don't say, okay, we know it's known adjacent vertices, so du plus dv is at least n, and then what? So this is nothing like it's the same proof. It's just that. So my feeling is that Dirac's proof would have been very different. Okay? So, Ore would have proved a different theorem and then would have realized that this simple proof also works for that case. So, uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't know the history. Okay. Okay. So, that is something which I wanted to teach you. And after that, I wanted to teach you for the next 5 10 minutes uh, something which is there in the first chapter. And I, I just, I also think it's important to introduce them now itself so that you can see them again and again and again and again and it will be there. Okay? Okay. So, this proof is very simple. I don't know whether it is there in the uh, digital book. I do not know. Maybe it is there in that Hamilton chapter. I, I have not seen it. Okay. But I just liked it. So, I thought it is easy enough to teach once you have taught other real thing. Okay. So, okay. So, let me. Okay. Ha, please tell me. Minimum number among all the counter examples, I chose the one with the minimum. Yeah, but you would have, but yeah, that's true, you could have chosen, but look, yeah, you could have started with any counter example, and among all those, you have chosen, right? But like the reason why I choose the minimum because the minimum itself does not exist then. Right? So, it is easier to understand that among all the counter examples, I chose one with this and this itself does not exist, then it is easier to say that nothing exists. Okay? That is the only reason. But for the proof, you choose any size, but we did use the fact that among that size, we took the one which has the maximum number of edges. <coughs> So there are some fundamental graph operations that people do. Okay. Okay. So 
what are the graph operations you have seen up until now? What are the graph operations you have seen? Like graph operation means operations which can modify the graph. Like, huh? No, up until now we have not said added the new image. Correct, fine. Okay, so add, maintaining a simple graph, okay. Maintaining simplicity. Okay, add an edge, add non adjacent edge. Okay, then not today, like over the last four, four and so what does that mean? Subgraph is not a graph operation. Subgraph is not a graph operation. But to get a subgraph is a graph. What is a graph operation we need to apply to get a graph? Delete subgraph. Delete vertex, delete edges, right? Okay. So I will keep this for now. Okay. There is another funky graph operation which is called contraction. Okay. So what is contraction? So you have an edge UV and it has neighbors, right? So what you do that you identify UV as one vertex and ideally there should be a self loop but no self loop. Okay? In some cases we allow but for now like for all our situation no self loops, okay? And how do I give edge from UV? Okay, so UV make UV adjacent to X if either X belongs to N of U or X belongs to N of V. That's it. So I make UV adjacent to all the neighbors of U and V, but maybe it could be that I have a neighbor, but don't add parallel edges. This is why I said make UV adjacent to X if either X is in NU or X is in V. Right? So this is a, this will maintain that the graph is simple. So this is called graph contraction. Okay? So these are three very important operations, delete vertices, delete edges and contraction. Even adding non-adjacent edges and there are much more other uh, different graph operation which does lots of much more transformation, we will see them. Okay? But Based on this, we can define some very nice operations, very nice objects. So what is a subgraph? Subgraph is nothing but, suppose I am going to call H is a subgraph of G. How can I, H is a subgraph of G. What all operations do I need to apply to get H? Both, right? Yeah. Edge delete and vertex delete. H is an induced subgraph of G. What do I need? Just vertex deletion is enough. And I want to say H is a contraction of G. What should I do? I want to define the new operation. I'm going to call that H is a contraction of G. Okay? Basically what I do is, is by what is it? H obtained by H contraction. Right? Anything that you can obtain by H contraction, okay? Anything that you can obtain by H contraction, I'm going to call that if given an H and given a G if I can apply some sequence of edge contraction operations and get to H, I'm then going to call that H is a contraction of G. How do you say that H is a subgraph of G? If I can obtain H by deleting some vertices and deleting some edges, I can obtain. So you start with this graph, you apply some operations, whatever possible graphs you can obtain, 
by using those sequences, you are going to call that, that this is the contraction. Okay. Any doubt here? Okay. So, like the way we have a subgraph, the way we have induced subgraph, and now H is a minor of G. If I allow you, what? Edge deletion, vertex deletion, and edge contraction. So equivalently, we can say the following. So you, I allow all the three operations. Okay. That you first get h prime, which is a subgraph of G, and then you get h, which is contraction. So you can also do first. So you can also do all these operations like in any order. Doesn't matter, right? It requires proof, but forget it. Doesn't matter, but any graph H, which you can obtain by applying following set of operation. You are allowed to do either edge deletion, or you are allowed to delete vertex deletion, or you are allowed to contract this. So whatever possible graphs you can get by doing this sequence of operations, I am going to call that H is a minor of G. So what is, when I say H is a minor of G, means I can obtain H by sequence of either edge deletion, or vertex deletion, or edge contraction. That's it. So this is what we will, there's something also called topological minor, but we will not get there at this point of time. Not very important in the development of things which we want to do in this semester. So we'll leave that there, okay? So I want, so these are the two new operations that I have defined, okay? This is contraction and this is minor, okay? This is the, this is the backbone of 20 years of graph theory which people have done, okay? Really, literally 20, 25 years of graph theory is about understanding what minors means. What if you exclude some minor will work, okay? So this is, okay? And last 10, 15 years is seeing with respect to in like induced subgraph exclusion what it means, okay? But a large part of graph theory which is, I mean, hopefully we will have time to dwell deep into some of these things is it all about minors, minors, minors. Okay. So the deep graph minor theorem is basically this. What it tells you, what is the most important, I think, theorem in graph theory, one of the most important theorem in the graph theory or in mathematics for that matter, is that okay, so this is called GMT or graph minor theorem. Okay. And this is by Robertson and Seymour over a sequence of 20 plus papers in the CTV across 20 years. Okay? Okay, so what did he prove? Let, let G1, G2 be an infinite sequence of graph. Then there exist GI and GJ such that GI is minor of okay. So this is the it basically says if you have infinite sequence of this thing, class, and your partial order or well quasi order, whatever you want to say, with respect to this minor operation, then there are these two graphs which are comparable. In the sense, one is a minor of the other. Okay, so this was just a highlight, which hopefully we will spend at least some sub some special cases of this in our last month. This is all. Okay. Okay, so yes. Pick up an edge. U B is an edge. Okay. You delete the edge U B, and delete the edge. Delete edge U. Delete the vertex U and V. 
So automatically edge will be deleted. Now I call identify, but best, best look, think of this way. I take UV and I contract along the edge UV. So now if I contract something, what can happen? I have get some self loops, right? Maybe there are same vertex, both are common too. I will get some parallel edges. I'm saying delete this edge, delete this parallel. So that is whatever you go. So this is why it's called contract. You take an edge UV, just collapse on each other, right? They become new vertex, call them UV. I'm calling the, like, it's good to call them UV because that just tells that we have got this big fat vertex by collapsing two vertexes whose name is U and V. Okay? Okay. Okay. Or in other words, delete UV, create a new vertex UV, make it adjacent to all the vertices, either U was adjacent to or V was adjacent to. Uh, that's it. Okay. Okay. So we'll start with matching. So So what is the matching? Matching is a subset of edges such that any two edges in the set are independent. So it's like independent set analog of uh, edge. So matching is a subset of edge set such that any two edges belongs to M, E and F are independent. And what does it mean that e two edges are independent? That E and F does not share or does not have a common end point. Let's look at some example. Oh, so can you tell me some matching here? Can you uh, tell me some trivial matching in a graph? Single edge. Single edge. Right? So any, if I pick one edge, that is a matching. So our goal is actually to maximize the matching size. So we want a matching with maximum number of edges. So OK. So this is one matching. So let's define something maximum matching. So what is maximum matching? If matching has maximum number of edges, then it is maximum matching. and a matching is called maximal matching if we cannot add any further edges to the matching. So what can you say about this matching? Is it maximal? So it is maximal. I, I cannot add any further edge. But is it maximum as well? Can you have some other matching? Yeah, so. Okay, I should have taken third. So if I pick, start with this edge, then this is a black matching is a uh, maximum matching of this graph. Okay, and uh, so a maximal matching is any matching which we cannot further extend. So we cannot a add any other edge into the matching. So blue matching is my maximal matching, but it does not have the maximum size because there exists uh, another matching with better size, like with uh, greater size. Maximum is maximal size. Yes. And not the other what? Maximum matching is maximum. Yes, yes, yes. Every maximum matching is maximal, but maximum has the like maximum size. Maximal can have uh, like very less size because uh, for example we can think of cycle yes yes there can be many okay so for cycle what can be a maximum matching if I take edges at a distance uh, like two 
then okay uh, this is yeah maybe a path uh, this is odd cycle actually i picked uh, maybe i should have uh, mm -hmm. so much right yeah so this is a maximal matching but i can have some other matching with greater size so if i pick this edge then this edge then pick this edge and then this so i have a matching of size 4 so that is maximum matching so you can so for uh, any cycle on n vertices can you compute uh, what is the matching size maximum matching size what would it be? Yes, if it is even, then it is n by 2. If it is odd, then n minus 1 by 2. So basically, n by 2 floor function. What about path? What can you say about path? Same uh, for even, you can take n by 2 every alternate edge, and if it is like odd, then also like alternate edges we will take and it will be n by 2 second function. n denotes the number of vertices. Okay, uh, and we will call any vertex which is end point of some matching edge, we will call it as matched. So, this is a matched vertex okay. and a vertex which is not matched. So, this vertex is not, not matched with the blue matching corresponding to blue matching. So, this is unmatched with respect to uh, blue matching. Okay. So, we will use this uh, terminology. Okay, so for uh, for path alternate edges, if we take, then that will give you maximum matching. So let's define something alternating path. So what? Alternating path starting from the first or starting from the like alternative. It could be two types of alternate path. Yeah. So for alternating, we will uh, define it as first vertex is unmatched. So your first edge is not matching edge. So alternating path means that in your path, uh, alternate edges belongs to the matching. Okay. So this is M alternating path. M is the matching. So we start with unmatched edge, uh, like non-matching edge. So, like this, and maybe I should add one more edge here. Okay. Uh, can't we just take any edge and start from there, taking alternating edges and create our alternating path? Or is it necessary to uh, exclude the first one? Yes, that's how we have defined this alternating path. It just starts with some unsaturated vertex. So, first edge is non-matching edge. Last can be matched or unmatched, but first should be unmatched. Okay. But if last vertex is also unmatched, then we will call this path as M augmenting path. Okay. So, this starts with unmatched vertex, it is necessary for us that it starts with unmatched vertex, but it can end anywhere. M augmenting path, it is an M alternating path. That means it, it starts with some unmatched vertex and ends also at some unmatched vertex. Okay. 
matched or unmatched both we will call as m alternating path they are alternating but for augmenting path last vertex should be unmatched okay so given this path what can you say about maximum matching maximum matching size is m plus 1 right so this is not maximum matching and how can you get uh, like lar larger matching from this switch the edges yeah correct so what we can do if we have such path we can just switch the edges and make every non matched edge as matched edge and matching edges non matching edges so we can do that by uh, by symmetric difference operation so take the symmetric difference of, of matching and edge set of the path what does it mean that exclude all the edges from m which are edges of the path union exclude all the edges which are matching edges from the path so uh, this set will be exactly this these uh, set of blue edges okay so this will give you a matching with larger size okay so so in a graph if you have uh, if there exists some m augmenting path then can you increase the size of the matching right so next we will prove that in fact we can characterize the maximum matching by m augmenting path and okay so our first theorem is that uh, given a graph g any graph m is a maximum matching m is a maximum matching if and only if there is no m augmenting path in the graph so let's prove the theorem what about forward direction so what is given to you we have that we have a matching and we are saying that m is maximum matching and we have to prove that there is no m augmenting path how will we prove there is a augmenting yes if the uh, suppose there is some m augmenting path then i can augment it and i'll get one matching with bigger size larger size okay so i'll take this path if there exists such path then i'll take this operation and uh with this m prime i'll take union of uh i'm sorry my new matching would be m prime which is actually the matching and symmetric difference it's with path edges union the edges if m was my earlier matching like initial m m was my maximum matching earlier so m union m minus yeah m minus ep so oh yeah 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 exactly it it will take care of this 
Yeah, yeah. M, M double prime will have larger cardinality, and it will be a matching of the whole graph itself. Yeah. So, but uh, now if I could, I had a path, and I got a new matching with larger size. Okay. So that's a contradiction. Okay, so what about reverse direction? So what we have? Yes, yeah. So, we can prove contrapositive statement that if there is a m augmenting path, then m is not maximum matching. Okay. So, so that means we are assuming that there exists an m augmenting path. M is not matching. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This this thing we have proved already actually. Yes. So that is actually the forward direction. No. So contrapositive will be that M is not a maximum matching. Then, then uh -huh. there is an M augmenting path. Okay. So suppose M is not a maximum matching, and we have to show that there is some M augmenting path. How will find that? So. Instead of this, I should say, assume M is not maximum. So, if M is not maximum matching, then there exists some some maximum matching. So, there exists some matching M prime or say let M prime be the maximum matching. Okay. Now we have to find some M augmenting path. M was our initial matching. Can you say that? Uh, won't be the right thing to say that there exists an M prime which is yeah, I am taking that there exists some ma maximum matching. Definitely, m there will be some maximum matching. I am saying that m prime is that matching. So, I have taken m prime maximum matching. Now, what I will do? I will take the symmetric difference. Uh, no, I will take the union of these two matching. Okay. So, I will take the union of these two matchings. That means, basically graph induced on m union m prime or vertex set of m union m prime whatever okay so basically i am looking at the graph which contains match matching edges m and m prime so how does this graph like look like what will be this graph you have two matchings. Yes. So, first of all, some uh, like isolated edges will be there, which are part of maybe only M or both. Even you can have some ed edge which is common in both. Okay. So, this. What else we can have? Edges only in M and not in M prime and edges only in M prime. Yes. 
Yes, that is true, but how the graph will look like? Yes. So, first of all, can uh, we have some 3 degree vertex in this graph? No, right? So, only 2 degree vertex will be there because any vertex may be uh, is matched by m and m prime as well and that is why its degree would be 2 because there are 2 edges incident on it, one with from m, one from m prime, but it cannot have any more edges incident on it, right? Yeah, exactly. So, if you know that uh, the degree of each vertex is at most 2 in G prime, in G prime, then what you can so say that each, compo each component is either what it can be? Okay, cycle path. or path. Okay. So, what kind of cycle I can have? So, I am saying that this is my M and blue is my M prime. So, what kind of yes. So, can this graph has odd cycles? So, this cycle is not possible right? Odd cycle is not possible because then this edge cannot be like in m or m prime. So, that means in this graph only even cycles are there and they are alternating cycles. So, we have only even cycles. Okay. So, we can say that each component is either even cycle or path. Now, look at the path like how can what kind of path we can have? So, we can have We can have this kind of path, we can have Okay, so we can have these kind of paths, right? If you have odd cycle, so what about this edge? In which matching this edge will be? It should be in some matching, right? Because graph contains only matching edges. So that's why odd cycles cannot be. Uh, what about paths now? So, path can be uh, like this kind of path. So, these all are alternating paths, right? But one uh, first vertex should be unmatched for alternating path. So, I am saying my uh, blue matching is uh, my maximum matching M prime and my red is the matching which I started with. So, this this one is this one is m prime alternating. So, this is m prime alternating path. Red is the maximum. Red is the uh, no, no, red with red is blue is the maximum. Okay. So, blue is the maximum. So, which one is? So, if we have even path then they are alternating, but not augmenting, right? Even size of path. What about odd paths? 
if we have odd path then what can you say no yeah so odd path can be there but uh, which odd path will be augmenting path actually but m augmenting or m prime augmenting we have two matchings right so because m prime is maximum matching so m prime augmenting path cannot be there so only m augmenting path can be there so m augmenting path means that your first edge is blue edge because red is my m matching so that means this so this is this m augmenting path so if we have such a path then we can say that m augmenting path is there so i can extend it and so uh, that was not uh, no actually that we wanted to prove right we we are pro proving contrapositive statement that if m is not a maximum matching then there exist m augmenting path so we start with m is not maximum matching and now we we are looking for some m augmenting path so if we found this then we are done okay so now uh, only thing remaining is that we have to claim that m uh, there exists such path m augmenting path okay and this kind of path cannot be there because it is not possible so that means uh, we already uh, uh, claim okay i am just writing the statement which we argued now so every cycle in g prime is even length second what we said if we have even paths then we are not talking uh, worrying about them because they are not useful for us so second thing we can have path we can have even path odd path for even it, like it doesn't help us so we'll talk about odd paths so every odd path if there exists some odd path every odd path is m augmenting okay every odd path is m augmenting if it exists so now only we have to talk about its existence why it exists okay suppose is it's not m augmenting is m prime augmenting because m prime contains your blue edges yes so for blue matching is it, it is augmenting right but blue matching is maximum matching so it has maximum size there cannot be any m prime augmenting path there okay because it has maximum size so this cannot be there so only we have to talk about the existence of this so what happens if it does not exist if it is not there yes exactly so we'll count the number of edges and we'll see that if there is no such path then your count your edges in m count your edges in m prime they will be same because what you have you have some uh, even cycles which has same number of m edges same number of m prime edges for even path also you have same number of m edges same number of m prime edges and you can have this kind of edges this will also be covered in path no but this will be odd path okay we are not talking about this so if we have single edges but it uh, it belongs to both paths so i'm saying this is m union okay maybe i should say m intersection m prime 
okay so you can have such edges also or for simplicity you can when you are taking this graph you can take multi edges so if some edge belongs to both matching then you can take multi edge so you can say that this is one component so you can treat it as even cycle so again it has same number of edges okay but we know that uh, m prime is cardinality of m prime is strictly greater than m right so what does it imply that there should exist some m augmenting path right then only you can have uh, more edges from m prime so in this path you have more edges from m prime so from m prime you have two edges from m you have one so uh, this implies that there exists some m augmenting path as uh, So we are done. So that means there exists such path, and we can augment. So this is a characterization. So now, based on this characterization, you can design algorithm for general graphs or special graph. Okay. So you can look at some because now you only have to find augmenting path and. Every time you get some augmenting path, you augment the path and get a matching with bigger size. And again, search for augmenting path and then again augment it. So like this, and once you have no augmenting path left in the graph, then you reach to a maximum matching. Okay, so that means you can use it to design algorithms. Yeah, maximal matching. Yeah. Find the yes, yes. How many times? Every time you are finding some augmenting path, augmenting, you are increasing the size by one. So at most like m times you can have. In fact, much lesser than that. Yeah, at most m times. Okay, so now suppose uh, we have. Sorry, I, I have a question actually. Yes. Yes, please tell. So while in G prime, okay, this is a graph in this one, in, 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 in that actually, uh, can, can there be edges uh, which is in both in M and M prime? In this proof, yes. Uh, there can be edges uh, which are in both m and m prime and so i am taking multiple edges uh, i am allowing multiple edges in g prime so if some edge uh, belongs to both the matchings then i'll take two edges incident on the same vertices so same set of vertices so i'm treating it as even cycle again you have same number of m and m prime edges So let's uh, once we have some maximum matching in the graph, let's look uh, at the graph how the graph will look like. So suppose you have this maximum matching. So this is us. This is a set of uh, vertices 
which are like matched set of vertices okay and this is the remaining graph remaining set of vertices so can you say something about the set you have some maximum matching here and now can you say something about the remaining graph independent set right so there cannot be any edge belongs to this part because if there is any edge i can safely add it to the matching so that means this hmm? maximum matching yeah this is maximum matching for maximal yeah for maximal as well okay so this is your say s and this is your g minus s and g minus s is independent set okay so do you remember any problem which we are looking in other course yeah so for vertex cover as well if we remove the vertex cover then the remaining graph is independent set right so that means this v of m gives a vertex cover yeah this is the approximation algorithm that you uh, find any maximum maximal matching and take the both end points into the set that is a vertex cover why it is to approximation see exactly so uh, matching is the set of in independent edges so for every edge at least one endpoint should be in the vertex cover and so minimum vertex cover size is at least the size of maximum matching okay but can we say something more like can we say that how uh, what would be the cardinality of vertex cover exactly for graphs so in general we cannot say but what about bipartite graphs can we say something for bipartite graphs that we will see yes so in fact for a uh, bipartite graph the minimum vertex cover size is exactly same as the max uh, size of maximum match okay and that is conic theorem so this is this is called conic theorem uh, i think 932 or 31 okay uh, what it says so given uh, we are assuming that bipartite graph is given given
Okay, so uh, theorem is that uh, the maximum cardinality of a matching in G is equal to the minimum cardinality of the vertex cover. So let's prove. So let M be the maximum matching. Okay, so M M be a maximum matching. Now we want to pick some. Uh, so we saw here that for every matching edges, for every matching edge, we need to take one endpoint into the vertex cover, right? That is necessary. So basically, and here we we are trying to prove that the maximum cardinality of the matching is same as the size of minimum vertex cover. Okay, so that means from uh, each matching edge, we have to pick one vertex exactly, and that will give us a vertex cover, minimum size vertex cover. Okay, so so let uh, let's assume that uh, U is a vertex cover. Uh, we are trying to find this U. And so you will have some vertices from A, some vertices from B. Okay. So this is a constructive proof. Given a matching, we are trying to construct this vertex cover. Okay. So we are saying that this U is a VC, and so uh, it will have some vertices from here, some vertices from here. So this is U intersection B, U intersection A. Okay. So let's define uh, this set, U intersection B. So how we are picking uh, the endpoints? So we are saying that these are matching edges like this. Okay. You can have m <coughs> many more vertices here. Maybe. Okay. So let's define this set. We will add those. We will take those vertices uh, from B, uh, which has some alternating paths. So, if there is an M alternating path and set B. So, if in B, for any vertex, if there exists, uh, if there is exists some m alternating path which ends at B, then we'll add it in U. Okay. So free from B, we are selecting those vertices which has some m augmenting path coming to that vertex. Okay. And otherwise, so this is for any matching edge. So basically, this is uh, vertex set of M intersection B. Because for every uh, matching edge, I need to uh, put one of the endpoints into my solution, into my this set U. So I'm saying for any matching edge, I will uh, I will take the B, uh, the vertex in the B part right set if there exists some m alternating path which ends at b okay but this is not oh i am just showing that these are matching edges <coughs> okay so for each matching edge you we need to put some vertex in u so i am saying that uh, some part of u will come from b some part of it comes from a so these are those sets and there are many more edges 
here, yeah, which I have not drawn like this, and many more vertices as well. Okay, something like this. Okay, and otherwise. So what? So maybe what? Uh, otherwise. Okay, let's say uh, let A B is some matching edge, then we will put B into U if this happens. Yeah, maybe I should write it that way. Okay, it's so let A B is a matching edge where A belongs to A, B belongs to set B then if there is an, an alternating path to vertex B, then put this B in my U, otherwise I will put A in U because for every matching is I need to put something in u one of the endpoints. So, I am adding b in u if there is some m alternating path to v or otherwise I will put a in u. Okay. So, now this will return uh, the set u intersection b like this. Okay. So, this is the definition of u intersection b. Okay. So, once I have defined this what I want to show that uh, this u is a vertex cover. U covers all the edges. So, our claim is U is a vertex cover. Okay. So, let us prove it by contradiction. So, suppose U is not a vertex cover. That means, there is still some edge which is not covered by this set U. So, you have this edge which is not covered. Okay. So, that means A is not in U, B is not in U. Okay. Both are not in U. So, if A B is not covered, that means A does not belong to U. Okay. So, uh, now recall that alternating path starts with some unsaturated vertex. Okay. So, if unmatched vertex. So, if A is unmatched, then can we say that this is a path M augmenting path, M alternating path. Sorry. If A is unmatched by M, then can we say that this edge is M alternating path? this is an alternating path, because I am saying that if A is unmatched. So, your alternating path should start from some unmatched vertex. So, if A is unmatched, then we are done, because if A is unmatched, then this A B is, then A B is uh, M alternating path. to B. So, that means, by this definition uh, B should be in the B should have been in U. This implies B belongs to U and that means, it is covered. 
So, let us assume that A is matched. Okay. So, A is matched, but this is not a matching edge, because if it was a matching edge, then one of the endpoints must have been in U. right? So, this is not a matching edge, otherwise it would have covered already. So, but A is matched, what does it mean? Yeah, yeah, define. We are defining this set and then we are claiming that it is a vertex over. Okay, so if A is matched, then there exists some matching edge incident on it, right? So some A B prime. This is matching edge. So if A is matched, this implies there exists some a B prime belongs to M. Okay. Now, this is a matching edge. Now, what can you say about? We know that from every matching edge, we have put some vertex, one of the endpoints in U. So, what can you say? We know that A is in not in, not in U then B prime is in U. So, now because A B prime is a matching edge, this implies that and now because A B prime is a matching edge and A is not in U, this implies B prime belongs to U. Okay. So, if B prime belongs to U, what does it mean? Yes. So, by definition, there exists some m alternating path which ends at B prime. So, we have some path. Okay. So, it can be like this and we are like matching, non matching edge, matching edge, non matching, matching like this. Okay and it starts with some unmatched vertex. So, if we have such path, then can we have a path for B as well? Uh, no, aug we are not looking for augmenting path, we are looking for alternating path. We do not know. B would be matched, otherwise, uh, no, we do not know. Because in this case, we are taking A is matched, so B may be unmatched. So, we do not know. Yes, exactly, because we do not need aug augmenting path, we are looking for alternating path. So, whether this is matched or unmatched, it this path has started with some unmatched vertex. So, this is definitely an alternating path, it may it will not be augmenting because we are taking maximum matching, but it does not matter to us whether it is matched or not, it is still m alternating path. So, I am saying what if. because uh, so we said that a is unmatched because if a sorry if a is unmatched then we have this a b itself is a m alternating path okay and we are done if it is not it is matched then it is matched with some b prime right so there exists some a b prime matching edge so now for every matching edge we have put some vertex in u right we have picked some end point from this matching edge and we started saying that a is not in u what does it mean that b prime is in u and what is the definition of u intersection b because b prime belongs to b right so it will be here so that means there exists some m alternating path 
which ends at B prime. And we just extend that path to B. So, it can look like this or maybe it can look something like this. So, in that case we will extend it here. So, we will come to B prime and then go back to here. Does this alternative path will contain this A, B, A, B prime? It can also happen. It may. It may also happen that this is some m augmenting path which is starts with some unmatched vertex. Then also you have alternating path right to B even in that case. So, if B belongs to that alternating path then also you can have that path up to B and if it is outside then you can just come to B prime and then go to A and B. So, in either way you can construct. So, that means there exists some m alternating path which ends at B okay. and that means that B is covered. So, should I write something B prime is in U and so there exists an m alternating path. B prime. Now extend this path B to B. Why? How? P. P ends with B prime, A, and B. So this is this is uh, m alternating path and set okay and so it should be in u because we had maximum matching it so is it okay proof oh i think time is no, we do not know. There are some graphs, but we do not know like this is only one direction. Is it okay? Uh, do you have any questions? Yes, yes. Okay, I think then we are done.